Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host, broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM iHeart Media Studios and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. All right, I'm joined on the show with Lean Kawas, PhD, CEO, and President, M3 Biotechnology. This this woman has making made some major breakthroughs in neuro excuse me I can't even pronounce it neurodegenerative uh, diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and I I really can't wait to get into it she's she's got a history uh, just a huge history in this industry sector of making breakthroughs Lean welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael, for having me today. All right, my pleasure. Give us a little, a, a little ba- more background on you, what you're doing, because you're steering this this ship that that's curing human humanity some of its biggest problems. Uh, yes, I would love to do that. So, um, at M3 Biotechnology, uh, we are an emerging company, um, uh, a therapeutics company that is focused on a novel platforms of pharmaceutics. Um, I have a background in pharmacy, worked both on uh, clinical uh, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical setup, um, and worked with patients who had MS and neurodegeneration. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and continued in retail pharmacy. So I also understand all the processes that uh, reimbursement issues uh, moved. And I guess after that, I wanted to do more. I got a PhD in molecular cancer pharmacology and training in neuroscience, um, which resulted in the technology that we're working on uh, and empty biotechnology. Uh, the technology is focused on small molecule p- drugs uh, that modifies growth factors. Okay. Uh, basically, um, these growth factors are important in protection, uh, regenerating, uh, maintenance, and most important, importantly, restore the lost function. Um, in the case for Parkinson's, and, and most importantly, I would say Alzheimer's, a uh, huge and met medical need, brain cells are, are dying, and, and um, we are losing connections. Um, and these com- connections are important for normal uh, brain functions. Uh, we have identified a lead compound that we're trying to get into the clinic um, in 2016 uh, that has... Uh, in, in our animal models, we were able to restore the lost connections in, in these uh, brain uh, cells. Um, and this is really important for Parkinson's and, and Alzheimer's because we know that uh, in the marketplace, there's um, all the drugs out there are only symptomatic relief. They don't actually restore any function. Um, so it's, it's slow the progression, but it doesn't solve uh, the problem. So through the recreation of, of these connections, we potentially could modify the outcome and, and help uh, patients with Parkinson's and, and Alzheimer's. Now, you've, you've developed uh, some really strong people be backing you right now. I think you just recently uh, um, raised some money from Michael J. Fox Foundation. Uh, the National Institute of Health uh, is... is uh, um, tip their hat to you. You've got some, you know, some pretty good accolades of some people backing you up on these discoveries. We are actually, uh, um, that will also, I'll explain also the lean R&D model that we have. We have coast-to-coast collaboration that's mm-hmm. supporting uh, M3 uh, biotechnology. Uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation and the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation are uh, very crucial in coming at an early stage. Biotech is is a very tough industry, especially at early stage. So they, they did support the uh, um, company or the technology at earlier stages, uh, but M3 just closed uh, around that. Also, we got some support from Life Science Discovery Fund. It's a Washington state uh, fund that um, basically looks at the science, the business, uh, the potential for commercialization and, and returns uh, for the investment opportunities. And, and, and this is, we, we're actually one of the few groups that we're able to tap uh, on this uh, fund uh, three times and then being vetted uh, 
uh, on all aspects of, of the business and the science moving forward. And not, not only that, just handling working on your own business, but you're also, you know, a featured role model for other women who are trying to break through the gra- glass ceiling. You, you know, you, you speak at uh, different organizations and you also help help women in the industry to further themselves, too, if I got that right. Hi, I'm, I'm dedicated to, I would say, people, men and women who uh, like science and have the entrepreneurship spirit and want to lead companies and address unmet medical needs. The numbers are imbalanced for men and women. But I think, uh, I, yes, I, I, I think we need to be more aggressive as women to uh, get uh, the uh, top uh, positions in, in companies, science, engineering, um, because I don't think it's, it's, it's there. We have great leaders uh, as women and men. We have great people who execute the plan as men and women, but I'm, I'm dedicated uh, to support women, especially, but any person who, who wants to follow their passion. Well said. Now, let, let's talk about MM201, uh, you know, how, how you came up with it, how you deliver the drug, uh, you know, into the patients. Let's let's walk into that and the licensing and, and, and so on. So the science backing up MM201 is actually over 15 years because drug development process is an extensive, uh, long, needs a lot of people to, to work, Most, a huge talent needs to support a specific pipeline. Um, so MM201 is um, a lead compound that was identified from hundreds of compounds that were screened. Uh, Joe Harding is, is one of, uh, in Washington State University, is, is the main uh, inventor. Uh, I'm one of the co-inventors on the drug, but basically chemists, biologists, pharmacologists needed, needed to work on this drug. To get it to the point right now, uh, And I would say one of the biggest steps we are past that, and now we are trying to develop and make sure the drug is safe to get it to the next stage uh, testing in, in a clinical trial. Uh, we are working on having the drug delivered potentially as a pill, which is a very attractive uh, uh, difference in, in our technology. We are trying to develop affordable solutions that are feasibly delivered um, uh, through pills um, or, or other, uh, I would say, if you compare it to other technologies that are trying to use the same method, it's more invasive. Uh, we're, we're trying to develop MM201 as a lead compound and auto pill. Um, and we have shown effectiveness in, in multiple animal models, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Okay. Now, now I'm, I'm not a scientist in your field, but from my understanding, this directly affects stem cells and how they differenti- differentiate in, into the neuron cells. Well, bring that up for me. I'm not sure you're not a scientist because that's a very good question. Uh, basically, uh, the growth factors that we're modifying, the, the target, uh, is very important in neuronal stem cells differentiation and neuronal development and maintenance and regeneration. So when, uh, let's say the MM201 is the activator, it just turns the switch on, and when the switch is on, it induces a complicated downstream signaling pathway, but basically uh, imagine that you have the switch on and the party starts, So, and, and resulting in stem cell uh, differentiation and, and moving into uh, uh, functional neuronal now, cell and with functional connections. The, this is, tell me how this relates to other people in your industry sector trying to do the same thing. Are, are you neck and neck? Is this breakthrough technology? Is, is it something that we can look for, you know, 10 years from now? Well, the, the, the people that need that, I think those are strong questions. Yeah, I, I compare it to other groups, and I have to, of course, address that there's a lot of groups that are working hard to address the unmet medical needs. Right. But we have a unique technology uh, that is a simple technology that modifies not only this target, we will be able eventually to modify the activity of multiple targets based on the unique mechanism of action that we have. Um, Although we're focusing right now on this lead compound moving forward, we have other pipelines um, that potentially will support the company moving forward. 
Um, but this is um, the compound is small and expensive to manufacture, will be affordable, will not have any issues with reimbursement compared to other more invasive technologies that need drilling into the patient's head. And it's complex and potentially very expensive. And they, the outcome will be issues with reimbursement and coverage. Um, and also, we don't want to add to the suffering of the patients. We want to have a and easy and, and something that would mitigate against the suffering. That That is a great answer to my question. Thank you. Let's take the break right now. And when we come back, if we could, I'd like to talk to you about fast-tracking breakthrough FDA designations on that. All right? Perfect. All right, we'll be right back on the other side of this break with Lean Kiwas, PhD, CEO, and President, M3 Biotechnology. We'll be right back. BTJ Consulting was founded specifically to consult with accredited investors on how best to manage their oil and gas investments. The emphasis is not only on direct participation in drilling projects, but includes opportunities in the purchasing of oil rigs, service and equipment companies, real estate and or the purchase of royalty interest through lease pooling. This strategy further mitigates risk and spreads their clients' investments over the entire sector whenever possible. For more information, call 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com. 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com. That's 469-518-5008 or info at btjconsulting.com. And tell them Yorva sent you. Me? I started smoking when I was 13. I always thought when the time came, I could quit. No problem. Then at 28, I tried to go cold turkey, and I found out how hard it really was. I made it all day without a smoke. (laughs) Right until I met up with the guys. But I learned something that night. In fact, every time I tried to quit, there were more than a few, I learned a little more about what worked and what didn't work for me. And when I realized that I wasn't alone that most people don't quit on their first or second attempt, I knew there was still hope. Today, I'm an ex-smoker. My only advice is to never, ever give up trying to quit. If you're trying to quit smoking, the American Lung Association is here to help every step of the way. Visit quitterinyou.org for tools, tips, and stories from smokers we've helped to finally quit for good. The American Lung Association. We support the quitter in you at quitterinyou.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... ...could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. I'm Dr. James, founder of Diamond Physicians, a concierge medicine practice located in Dallas, Texas. Our Diamond 360 Advanced Physical Exam has been created for people like you who live a high-stress, fast-paced life. Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. experiences a life-changing heart attack or debilitating stroke. Negative stress tests and normal cholesterol levels do not exclude you. Half of all fatal heart attacks occur without warning. Diamond goes beyond traditional medicine with the Diamond 360 Advanced Physical Exam, proven to prevent heart attacks, strokes, and diabetes. Contact Diamond now at 214-395-3491. That's 214-395-3491. Or visit our website at diamondphysicians.com to take the Diamond Challenge. If your Diamond 360 reveals perfect health, receive a full refund. Your loved ones will thank you. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host, broadcasting to you live from 
the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM, iHeartMedia Studios, and worldwide through yorbamedia.com. I'm joined on the show with Lean Kawas, PhD, CEO, President, 3M Technology, uh, web address on this company, m3bio.com, the, the number three. All right, Lean, when we left off, we were talking about the breakthrough that you're making when it comes to this drug. You're, you're making it affordable, making it orally uh, uh, delivered to the patients. And with all, with all of those uh, attributes and accolades to your benefit and, and, and to your, to your um, really to, to your credit, I should say, there's always a red tape here with FDA designation. How are you fast-tracking this to get that F- FDA designation? So the FDA does have the bad drip of, of being the red tape. But I think there's a genuine uh, effort in fast-tracking uh, drugs that are in the pipeline for huge and medical needs, especially Alzheimer's. Um, there's real efforts to bring more drugs into the pipeline, clinical pipelines, and into the market. Uh, the FDA did have a um, modification on their fast track, adding a breakthrough designation uh, in April 2014. And basically here they're trying to push groups like us to think outside of the box. And um, in the space of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, there has been a lot of failures in the last decade or so. So there is definitely a lower energy uh, and there's more support for drugs to go into the pipeline. Basically what we need to show is that the drug is a feasible uh, uh, delivery or a feasible drug that has the potential to modify the drug in an early stage clinical trial. So all of our efforts right now is creating an endpoint and uh, we call it the biomarker and we are trying to individualize the biomarker per patient. Uh, We're looking at brain function, brain functionality that eventually will translate into a positive clinical outcome. Um, The FDA is willing to look at endpoints, early stage clinical uh, endpoints that there's a history in translation into a positive clinical outcome. And this is where we're focusing on and trying to uh, get the breakthrough designation. For the data that we have today, M3 uh, would qualify for a fast track because we have a drug with a potential to modify not only symptomatically uh, the course, uh, the diseases that we're addressing, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. At what stage of whether it's Alzheimer's or Parkinson's is is the the drug effective? Do you need to administer, administer this drug at the early stages or does it work up until a critical breaking point? So that's a good question, and we'll be able to answer it as we move into the clinical testing. Uh, From what we uh, know, um, we think that it will be more uh, effective in early and moderate stage, Uh, potentially has an effect in a later stage of the disease. Um, But, of course, it's going to be harder to get a, a similar outcome. And this is not only specific to our drug, uh, but um, any therapy out there. As the disease progresses, it's, it's harder to reverse it or, or modify it. But we, we're hoping, and this is a very good question, that we'll answer it in a clinical setup. When The, the other question that I have on, on this, if, if you're able to take uh, MM201, and, and I, I imagine it's reducing the, the onset of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, it's not completely curing it, right? In, you're right. It's a, it's, so there's a difference between cure. Cure is a very strong right. uh, word. Um, we are modifying. So we, there's um, lost connections that are uh, induced by the disease, mm-hmm. and we're recreating uh, the connection. So it's fighting uh, the disease. Basically, for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, it's, uh, there's uh, most of the patients, we don't know what induced the disease. So we can't truly really address uh, the cause of the disease, but we can definitely address the end point of the disease, which is the lost connection between brain cells. Well, here, here's the other part of the question. So let's say that you've got people who are being affected by these diseases. What about healthy people taking this drug? Would it actually increase their cognitive powers? 
So that's also a very good question. Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, but this is not something that we are pursuing or looking for. We are more interested in addressing the unmet medical need. Right, right. I understand. I just was, you know, thinking out of the box. I mean, you can. No, that's a that's a good question, and uh, and it's uh, it it's it's a long term. It's a vision uh, question that we'll address as we move forward into the clinic and market space. But uh, I, the answer, pharmacologically and scientifically, it should have some effect. But to also addressing this question, mm-hmm. um, potentially. Uh, this drug will be more specific to neurons that are losing the connection. Okay. Uh, they will be more responsive. So we, we don't expect to see the same level of response. Uh, the diseased neurons will have a more bigger impact uh, or, or change uh, and recovery in, uh, compared to normal neurons. And then you're also making it affordable for the general public, so it's not a, a super expensive uh, uh, medical application. It, it is a simple technology and expensive to manufacture, which gives us a huge pricing margin. But even uh, we projected two prices, low and high, even at the higher price, it's still very affordable and, and will be available and will help. Uh, Medicare will have all the healthcare systems nationally and internationally. Okay. Let's, we're nearing the end of the second segment, but I wanted to leave enough time to give you some elbow room. Give us a recap, if you can, of the 2014 or so uh, uh, milestones that you, you have achieved with your company, with M3, and, and the, the uh, um, thresholds, the goals that you have uh, as you go forward. So basically, 2014 was a great year uh, for M3. We started the development process, trying to move the drug into the clinic. We closed a round that uh, was supported also by uh, groups like the Life Science Discovery Fund. Um, and uh, we've early in the year, uh, we've been featured at the Michael J. Fox Foundation as one of the partnering groups. Um, and uh, this uh, and currently we're looking at the second round uh, of raise, but we are we're moving forward. We are using a lean R and D model, mitigating against the risk of uh, the high cost that is associated with biotech mm-hmm. company. Our investors are happy with our progress in achieving the milestones. Next step uh, will be getting into the clinic. Uh, we're looking at. Um, 2016 to to be in the clinic and at first in man uh, testing. If things go according to your plan, when do you think this drug would be able to uh, be available to you know to people? Hello. I can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you right now. Good, Lean. If, if things go according to your plan, when do you think we'll be able to see this drug out on the market? So basically from our projections, that, that's somewhat conservative. Uh, and if we uh, achieve the fast track um, designation, potentially in 2020, 2021, we'll penetrate the market. And what we're looking at is actually... Um, from companies and, and technologies that are in the same space is uh, partnering agreements when we go into the clinic uh, with one of the bigger six identified pharmaceutical companies uh, to support the clinical development and accelerate also market penetration. So are those domestic? You're talking about the, one of the six largest pharmaceutical companies have already started to, uh, to engage you in conversation about partnering with you. Um, is there been international interest too? National and international, yes. Wow. Well, amazing. So we are that far ahead on this technology, on this conversation that you and I are having. Mm-hmm. That's yes. that's amazing. All right, we're we're out of time on this one, but uh, before we go, Lean, any uh, events that you're going to be at where people can come and talk to you and shake your hand and know more about your business and, uh, and more about um, uh, MM two hundred one. So I'm going to be in Bio in June, um, and uh, that's the closest. And also in Eura Venture in April coming up. I will be uh, in NIO, uh, one of their events. Uh, they have uh, 
I would say small, but one of the biggest uh, new role uh, focused venture meetings. Great. I want to thank you for your breakthrough in the technology, what you're doing for, for humanity, Lane. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I want to thank everyone who helped and still helping uh, to move this forward. Well put. All right, Lane, we'll talk to you soon. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Lane Kawas, a PhD, CEO, President, M3 Biotechnology, web address m3bio.com. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with Per. Brogard, CEO, Forest Economics, a man who's bringing new business to Africa and he's financing it. We'll be right back. 